Game makers are looking at Xbox's slump in sales in dismay. Join us for Xbox falling sales prompts developers to ask, why bother supporting it? This is the medicine. Let's get into it. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of Cloud Dosage geeks hard knock digital culture and mm2k gaming back again with another episode of the medicine do us a huge favor before we get into this one hit that like button hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications please and do us a huge favor do yourself a huge favor when you hit those bells for notifications don't let youtube select it don't do not select personalize select all okay Th their algorithm is special <laughs> for lack of a better word and it doesn't always work for the best use case of every viewer all right but that's it uh, we got a special one for you today um developers or it's being rumored that developers are looking to step away from the xbox platform they're questioning their support um wow this is a big one because this is something that we've been talking about for years here on this channel that was going to be a byproduct of the xbox strategy we were told we were haters we were told that hey playstation uh the playstation platform is something that we're trying to take advantage of and we're trying to appease playstation people a whole bunch of silly stuff right uh, but nonetheless the delayed gratification or i can't even call it delayed gratification because this is sad i want to see competition in the space but the delayed gratification of knowing that hey it wasn't me just rattling off it wasn't me just trying to be a hater it was me trying to warn you that the tornado was coming down the road and i don't it's not ha I'm, look i'm not happy to see you sucked in the eye of the tornado but i'm happy that my ass <laughs> got out of dodge okay i'm um, in enough time and, and and that i sure did what am i talking about okay so Christopher Dream of GameIndustry.biz, and if you don't know who GameIndustry.biz is, think of them as the Associated Press of Gaming. He claims that at GDC, he spoke to a big time, big time developer who um, mentioned Xbox and questioned why they even support the Xbox series at this juncture. Um, and there was some hints that conversations from other developers were around the same tone and that developers were really rethinking the future of supporting the Xbox series console or Xbox in general. Um, I want to give a shout out to King Thrash before I take this from him, <laughs> but King Thrash gaming said on Twitter that, um, he feels this is Larry and studios because the way that Christopher Dring had, um, described them. And, and I agree. He said it was a big time developer that had a big time game in 2023. I agree. I think it was Larian. Larian is known for this back and forth um, that they've had with Xbox. Um, they finally got their way, but not until and not not before Phil Spencer tried to throw them under the bus. I feel like they went back to them and said, "Hey, Phil, n n now you've gone too far. So you you either do what we want you to do, or we're not supporting the platform." And he ended up doing something unprecedented, which there was a particular feature set, split screen co op, um, that was causing problems apparently on the Series S. Normally, if it causes problems on the Series S, so what? You got to figure it out, and you can't release it on the X. But but Larian got their way. They got it released on the X. It's just not a feature set on the S. So, yeah, um, kind of rocky, not the best relationship. Then I also I know that when uh, Xbox laid some people off at the beginning of the year, they, they had so nice, n not so nice words about the, the act. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, I don't think it's just a Larian thing. I think this is, again, a byproduct of, hey, look, when you create a, a player base that when a new game comes out, the first inclination is, is it coming to Game Pass? And if it's not coming to Game Pass, they're least likely to buy it. Um, that's not attractive to big time AAA developers. Larian Studios made it abundantly clear, we are not going to put this in Game Pass. Now, because this is the game of the year uh, and you know it has a lot of big heft on it when it dropped on Xbox amongst Xbox players, um, it did do well in sales for a particular period of time after launch. Uh, but with that said, um, you know, people are looking at the number of consoles that are being sell sold. Like when you look in Europe, uh, I can't remember the time frame. I think it was last month. Xbox is getting outsold in Europe 10 to 1 to PlayStation. So when you look at these Europe 
European developers and publishers, they're looking at each other like, why are we supporting this platform? We get that the States is a bigger place, but it, I mean, it may not be 10 to one in the States, but the gap is widening here as well. Um, so fundamentally, and talking to my co-host here on a lot of the podcast, Cold Blood Sensei, he says it's, it's very rare to see someone picking up an Xbox in Europe. Um, again, byproduct of the strategy, you, you, you don't try to compete in the AAA space for quality. You're trying to compete for an abundance of games in a $10 subscription model. We all said that a, that wasn't sustainable and we hold on to that thought because there's more to this story that's not sustainable and B it's going to water down the products, the games and the brands that Xbox is known for. Since Game Pass has been like the thing under Phil Spencer and Satya Nadella, those games fall flat. It feels like the creativity at Xbox has come to a screeching halt with games that for a brass and a demographic that is not going to hold the platform up, you know, they might get tantalized a little bit here. But again, the core um, brass, the AAA genre defining gamer, the, the gamer that made Xbox, they are not getting games created for them. And what they've done is after the 360, after they did a mass exodus from PlayStation to, to Xbox, they, they, they went right back home and they haven't returned and they'll likely never return because of the direction of this, this current regime. Um, yeah, you cannot create a bargain bin value product and that's the way that it's being seen. I don't care if you are an Xbox steward and a fan and you like their products, that's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Hey, I like country and buffet as well. But, you know, for those that are used to dining at Ruth Chris Steakhouse, you're not going to convince them that country and buffet is just as good. I'm sorry. You know, it doesn't devalue your taste. It just means that people of a different ilk are going to look at that and say, nah, not for me. Um, and then on top of that, Christopher Dring had also had said, you know, it's rumored that Xbox is now going to try to pull away from Game Pass because Game Pass just is not working. It's not hitting the marks that it needs to hit. We even had Tom Warren, big time Xbox enthusiast, um, even hint that, look, yes, yeah, subscribers were lost. Subscribers have been lost. So things are not going in the right direction for Xbox. And I know a lot of you are hearing this and you're kicking your cabinets and, and slapping your monitors or whatever in your life. But MM2K, you're not getting the big picture. Long term, Xbox wants to be on every screen that can play a game. And that's fine. I get that long term, but long term isn't today. You know what I'm saying? Like I may 10 years from now want to get a Lamborghini right but if right now i can't survive if i don't get employed or start a business or do something the likelihood of me getting that lamborghini by the time we get to year nine is going to be next to zilch people are people are peering into the future and forgetting about the president the present and you can't do that you, we don't we don't get to hop into the hot tub time machine and go into 2035 if as a platform they want to make it to that point to where they will be popular on every screen then they got to be able to leapfrog from their current consumer base and that current consumer base has to be enough to sustain them their core consumer base is the triple a genre defining gamer and the triple a genre defining gamer is leaving the xbox platform in mass now again, there are the Game Pass value gamers that are starting to accumulate and those within the cloud community that are, you know, like, you know, more and more recognizing Xbox, but the amounts of which they are losing their core fan base versus them gaining, you know, from cloud gamers and, and, and these Game Pass gamers, it, it's not equal. It's not sustaining itself. So as an end result, what I think you're going to do is you're going to see less and less Xbox over time, and you're going to see more and more Microsoft gaming, meaning just more publishing, more publishing. I know Microsoft would hate to completely leave the ecosystem space, right? Because they get paid off of DLC and, and game sales and stuff like that. 
But if you created a dynamic to where those publishers don't even feel like it's worth putting those games on your platform, then what are you to do? You have no other choice. I see a future personally where Xbox makes games that is like the bulk of what they do. They do have an ecosystem for free to, excuse me, free to play games, games like Fortnite, um, Apex Legends, stuff like that. I, I, I really see that they be able to do games like that um, and that be the lion's share of their uh, triple or triple a or, or third party support you, you might see a madden you might see a fifa like you might see ea games but i really expect that um especially these um independent these more independent uh triple a studios they're, they're gonna they're gonna back away from the platform and i think you're gonna see more and more games good looking games because of uh, unreal engine 5 um by a lot of these indie studios they're, they're gonna start backing away because they're going to say, no, we don't want to put these games in Game Pass day and date. Um, because the lion's share of Game Pass is going to be absorbed by your first party games. That doesn't create a great market for us, even though you're writing us a check. Um, along with whatever residuals we get from usage or whatever. Um, you, you, I, I think if they continue on this path where they don't compete in the AAA genre defining space, while the AAA genre defining space and hardware is king... If they can't find a way to get a good grip on that, they're going to have a very, very difficult time. The only other answer is, look, you're going to have to create software and content that starts blowing it out of the water, that brings people to your ecosystem, that makes them say, wow, this is Xbox's God of War, or Xbox's Horizon or whatever. Until you start making content like that, that draws people to that ecosystem, you know what I mean? Um... I really don't see it happening. And I don't I just don't see anything coming down the pike that, that screams that. And then even if it does scream that, I think Microsoft is now in the in, in the belief system that, you know, hey, look, let's just um let's just put our stuff everywhere and let's just make the marquee reason for our own native hardware to be, look, we're just gonna create ways that you can inter interact with games. We're gonna have our own um independent ways that you can do that you can do you can you can interact with our games anywhere but here's the way that you can do it with us we'll get a little bit more money from it as long as they can find some inexpensive hardware solutions and stuff like that uh, i i see them doing that but again as an xbox gamer even if you're not worried about the triple a genre defining thing you got to be concerned about developers not wanting to add games to the platform that's that's why i said i always told you guys as well i get what you like but you got to be concerned that they're not in a core fight right now because the core fight is what's lucrative to the developers you could want to get in the hot tub time machine all you want and say well it's going to be about all these screens we don't know that we don't know that and we don't know and look it's not like playstation is in position to take over on those screens as well Who's to say that they don't look at PlayStation and uh, gamers don't look at PlayStation and say, well, PlayStation is the way that I want to interact with all these screens. Nintendo's the way, you know, who GeForce Now is the way. Who says that because Microsoft is the most uh, boisterous about it, that they're going to be the ones that steer the way? Money doesn't mean everything. Money didn't help them out this time. It's all about saturation and customer satisfaction. That's going to lead the way. And Microsoft does not have that when it's when it comes to gaming. So hopefully we understand that we take this Christopher Dring thing a little bit more seriously and we stop sitting there trying to, again, be in a state of denial and say, oh, no, 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 no. It's weird to me that he would say something like that. Look, it's just common sense. Anybody with a business acumen would look at that story and say, OK, that makes sense. So a lot to think about. I hope that it's not true because I want to see a more competitive stance from Xbox and hopefully they got one last hurrah as far as a platform is concerned. But I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not holding my breath. You know, I, I've seen this for too long. I've been watching Phil since 2014. It's been 10 years. <laughs> you ain't, you know, don't don't piss on my head and tell me it's raining. All right. With that said, I appreciate it from everybody. Thank you very much. And again. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. Check out the links below to follow me. And also, when you hit that bell, make sure you do not hit personalize because they don't know what they're doing. Make sure you hit all. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.